It is a different day. This is the day that the Lord has made. And we have come to rejoice in it. Um, There's a lot being said in our culture about what is essential and what is not. I believe that what we are doing here today is essential. Churches are essential because it has to do with your relationship with God. And your relationship with God is the most essential thing that you will ever do. Yesterday, today, or tomorrow. There's nothing more important than your relationship with God. We are in a war. We're in a battle. It is raging. This is not a television production. This is not a bad dream or a nightmare. We're in reality. We're in the war. We're in life. And we're going to live somewhere forever and ever and ever throughout eternity. And what we do right now will determine where you spend your eternity. We have played church long enough. Could I get an amen? Churches have played church long enough. Going through the motions, having their little social clubs, doing things that were not essential. It's all about relationship. Turn to somebody and say, you are important. You matter. I want you to go to heaven with me. So, how do we do that? Last Sunday we talked about stepping out of some things. And there are some things that we need to step out of. Because in this life that we are walking, we step in some stuff, don't we? Look at your neighbor and say, Don't step in it because it stinks. And sometimes the more you stir it, the more it stinks. Of course, the grass is always greener around the cesspool. But it's messy. So last week we talked about stepping out of some things. Today we want to talk about stepping into something. Because there are some things that we need to step into. Psalm 37 says, The Lord Lord directs the steps of the godly. Are you godly? If you are, He is directing your steps. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives so God is concerned about you he is concerned about your life he is concerned about your future he is concerned about your children your family your finances your relationship your pain your healing your deliverance he is concerned about all of that the Bible says he knows the number of hairs on your head he knows when one falls out that is how much God is concerned about you So I want to talk about some things that we need to step in in 2021. This is 2021, right? Are we in 2021? This is 2021, right? Are you sure? So it's supposed to be all different, right? Maybe. We hope so. Well... Some stuff started in 2020. 2020 is what we think about focus. You go to the eye doctor and there's a chart. And we read that chart and we determine our vision. Or the doctor determines your vision. If you have 2020 vision or 2025 or 2030. Or in the case of some folks, 2300. It has to do with what you see and your focus. And I believe that last year was a year of resetting. It was a year of perception. 
We have to perceive what's going on here and what's happening. Because what is happening has never happened in the history of the world as we know it. Right? It's different. People talk about the new normal. But we're in 2021. So in 2021, I've always tried to teach you that in the Bible, numbers are significant. Names are significant. There's so many things that we tend to overlook. But the number 20, it signifies expectancy or a period of waiting. And we certainly saw some of that in 2020. But this is 2021. So two is the number of double. You know that. Two means double. It's a double portion. And it represents integrity and agreement. One is the number of God. It is the number of unity. It is the number of power. But 2021 is a compound number made up of several numbers. 21 is a symbol of sin. It also means rebellion. The children of Israel had 21 rebellious events after they left Egypt. But the number 21 also, it's a compound number of 3 times 7 is 21. We know that three is the number of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It is the number of the Trinity. We know that seven is the number of completion, perfection, God's number of perfection. He created the heavens and the earth in six days. On the seventh day, he said, it is good, and he rested. He saw that it was good. In seven days, it was a, it was a completion or a perfection of everything that God had created. So what does that mean, Pastor? Pastor? I believe that what it means is, is in 19, or, or, 19, listen to me, man, that was a reach back, wasn't it? Let's go back. Let's go back. In 2021, we have a choice. Because 21 means sin and rebellion, but it's also, it is the number of God's divine perfection. It is three times that. And I believe that God is giving us a choice to listen to his voice and to choose wisely and to step into some new things, to step out of some old things. But we also have the choice to continue in sin, to be rebellious, to go down the wrong path. Because the Bible says in Deuteronomy, God said, I set life and death before you, blessing and cursing. Choose life so that you and your seed may live. So we're going to step into some things. And you know that in the life that we live, chains sometimes bind us. We get bound up by stuff. And one of the the things that connects us the most, or that causes us the most problem, is fear. We get bound by fear. We get chained up by fear. Fear causes us a lot of problems. It is one of the most successful tools that Satan uses against the people of God. Fear. But fear is only an emotion. Right? It's an emotion. Now we have reasons to be fear, but it's an emotion that it can help us. It can be positive. It can help us perceive And protect us from things that are dangerous to us so we can take action. But if it's not managed, if it's not controlled, if fear is not dealt with, then it can lead to feelings of anxiety and panic and it can take over our life. 365 times in the Bible we read the words, don't be afraid or fear not. So we must take charge of fear. And you say, Pastor, that's easy. But when I have a panic attack, when I'm overwhelmed with what I'm dealing with, when I'm overwhelmed with fear of failure or fear of not going to heaven or fear of lack and poverty and 
all these fears that come into my life, fears of broken relationship, fears of losing my job, fears of divorce, fears of sickness and disease, something's going to get on me and take me out. When all these fears come on me, it causes me frustration and panic, and I don't know what I'm going to do. So what do we do? We go to the Word of God. Give us a scripture, Rita. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9 Let the peace that Christ gives control your thinking. It is for peace that you were chosen to be together in one body. And always be thankful. Colossians 3, 15. So we got to break those chains off. And the word of God tells us don't be afraid. Do not be afraid. Let the peace of God come upon you. Aren't you glad that we have the word of God to break off the chains? We can break the chains. Shout, break the chains. Come on, shout it. Break the chains. Break the chains. With the word of God, with the power of the Holy Spirit, with you committed to Christ, then you can break every chain that tries to attach itself to you. Every evil spirit that comes against you, you can break them off. Look at your neighbor and say, I am a chain breaker. And it's a good thing because when you break off one chain, the enemy has something else. He will come again. Can we declare? Huh? Can we declare? Yeah, we can declare. Good. We need to declare. I'll just jump chains right really? here a little bit. All right. Adam, lead us in a declaration. Get on your feet and let's declare this. Declare this with me like you mean it. Get on your feet. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of your son, Jesus. I put into effect and enforce God's original purpose in my life. And I resist the plan and purpose of Satan. I decree, I decree and, and declare, declare that, that in this battle, battle no, no internal or external weapon, be it emotional, emotional financial, social, physical, psychological, interpersonal, spiritual, or organizational formed against me shall prosper. I place upon myself every piece of your armor so I will be able to resist the enemy. Then after every battle, I will be standing firm. I put down strongholds and cast down imaginations. And every high thing that lifts itself against the knowledge of God, I submit my thoughts to your lordship. I speak that your anointing destroys every oak in my life. Can you say break, chains, break? Break, chains, break. Say it again over your life. Break, chains, break. In Jesus' name, amen? You may be seated. I'm not used to having so many people helping me. I got a little carried away It's there. a new season. It's a new normal. <laughs> but we know that every time you defeat the enemy and you win one battle, there's another one down the road. And we can learn from that. We don't need to get the big head and get lackadaisical and laid back because we won a battle because there's another battle ahead and our lack of commitment is something that will defeat us quicker than anything else we can overcome fear we can conquer fear we can stand on the word and know that we don't have to be afraid. But where is your commitment every day? Oh, I know you're committed today. You're here. It's Sunday. We go to church on Sunday. But what about Monday? What about Friday night when you're tempted? What about Saturday night? What about when she flashes those eyelashes at you? They'll fall off because they're fake. What about that... That perfume that gets into your nostrils and intoxicates your brain and you lose your mind. What about 
lust of the flesh and lust of the eyes and the pride of life. What about that desire to have so much money that you become a workaholic? And you leave God by the wayside. And you leave your family behind. And you don't spend time with them. And all you are consumed with is making just a little bit more. What things get in front of you? What about addictions? What about things that control you? And you lose control and you lose your mind. And you get to the point you are just wrapped up with those things. With lack of commitment, not committed. Oh, you're committed one day, but not the next day. And you are bound by the chains of lack of commitment. The enemy wants you to question your commitment. He wants you to ask yourself, can I really do this? I don't know if I can do this or not. I tried it before. It didn't work out so good. But accountability is always the right answer. Integrity begins when nobody is looking. How do you act when there's nobody to report? How do you act? What do you think? What do you read? What are you seeing on the internet? What are you doing when there's nobody else around? We need to have integrity every day. Living accountable breaks addictive cycles. We need to be committed to his word, committed to righteous relationships, committed to a season of prayer, committed to tithing, committed to building relationships with others. We need to be committed. We need commitment. But the lack of commitment will wrap chains and tentacles around you and keep you bound so that you can never reach your fullest potential, so that you can never be all that God wants you to be. Today is the first Sunday of a brand new year, but not just any year. This is 2021, and if you've ever made a commitment before, you need to get serious with God today. We need to make a commitment today that we are going forward no matter what. We need to make a commitment today that we're going to break the cycle and break the chains, and once and for all, we will be committed to the cause of Christ to his purpose in our life, to our destiny, and to fulfill the plans that God has for us. We do it with the word of God. Psalm 37, 5, commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. Proverbs 16, 3, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Proverbs 23, 12, commit yourself to instruction. Listen carefully to words of knowledge. Before you take that off the screen, I want to I encourage you to take pictures of these slides. Get these scriptures. Take a snapshot of these and look at it through this week, through this year. Make a folder that you can refer back to because we need to be committed to the cause of Christ. And these scriptures break the chains. Let's break the chains. Let's snap them off. Let's let them fall in the mighty name of Jesus. When you Come stand on, break on the, the chains. word of God. Break the chains. Get on your feet. Let's break the chains. Get on your feet. Break the chains. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of your son, Jesus. Establish divine parameters, boundaries, borders, and laws of the kingdom of heaven to govern all activities within my life. I overrule, disallow, and veto every diabolical activity that opposes the will of God concerning my life and family. I forcefully resist the strategies of the enemy and prohibit the hijacking of divine thoughts, inspiration, revelation, insight, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding coming from your throne room. I put a halt to all distracted, disturbing, destructive measures. For this reason, you came to destroy the works of the enemy. I nullify, dismantle, cancel and forcefully oppose the satanic operations, maneuvers, manipulations, subversions, strategies, tactics, plots, plans, and ploys which are designed to hinder, prevent, frustrate, deny, or delay your purpose in my life. I declare that your plans and purpose will have swift manifestation in their correct time and season. 
Can you say break, chains, break? Break, chains, break. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you and we thank you for the anointing to be committed in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And then we need to step into our communication with God. Because the enemy wants to silence your prayers. He wants to silence your communication with God. He doesn't want you to talk to God. He doesn't want you to spend time with God. He wants to silence you. He wants you to question whether or not your prayers are heard. He wants to silence your words. He doesn't want you to even believe that prayers work or that prayers change thing, things. But we must keep our communication lines with God open. It is our God-given privilege to talk to Him. He said, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. Let us call on Him in the time of need. The Bible says He knows what we have need of before we even ask. But He wants us to ask. So in 2021, I want to challenge you to begin today. And not just for 21 days, not just for 30 days, but make this year a priority to spend seven minutes in praise, seven minutes with petition to God, and then seven more minutes in praise. Sandwich your prayer time with praise and thanksgiving. Start with praise, offer your petition, and then praise some more. And if you will do that and commit 21 minutes a day, just 21 minutes, just 21 minutes, could you... Spend 21 minutes with God? The sad statistic is the average pastor only spends 90 seconds a day. And most church people, 30 to 60. We just whisper a little prayer, maybe over our meal. But what would happen if we just started with seven minutes of praise? Don't ask him for anything. Just seven minutes of praise. And then seven minutes of petition. And then seven minutes of praise again. Communicate with God. Take advantage of your opportunity to talk to the God of the universe. He hears and he answers prayer. In Matthew 6, 9 through 13. We read these words. In this manner, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever and ever. Amen. Can that you word. say, break, chains, break? Out of the mouths of babes, break, chains, break. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus. I, I, lift. I lift false burdens and remove feelings of heaviness, oppression, Depression and, and depression. depression. I, I cast, cast them upon, upon you, you, for you are my help. help. I shall, shall not be moved. Say that again. I shall, shall not be moved. I decree and declare, and declare that I am liberated from generational, generational satanic, satanic, and demonic, demonic alliances, alliances, soul ties, and curses. curses. I, I sever them, them by the sword, sword of, the of the Spirit and the blood of the, of the Lamb. Lamb. I, I speak, speak to, to my spiritual, spiritual DNA, DNA and, and resist, resist every deceiving spirit that attacks me. me. I open myself to divine, divine deliverance in your, your presence. presence. Father, perfect those things concerning me. I, I decree and declare a prayer, prayer shield and a hedge of protection surrounds my life. In your secret place, you hide me, and nothing will penetrate the Holy Spirit hedge of protection in my life. Every time I pray, I desire an anointing to destroy strongholds and cause the agenda of heaven to manifest in the earth. Is that your desire? Look at that last statement. 
If you want an anointing to destroy strongholds, lift both hands. God, give us an anointing that when we pray, we demolish and destroy strongholds. And the authority of our prayer in your name brings heaven's agenda to the earth in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, it all comes down to covenant relationship. God is a covenant-keeping God. And He wants us to walk in covenant. But the enemy, he wants you to break your covenant. He wants you to break your covenant relationship with God. He wants you to break your covenant relationship with your spouse. He wants you to break all the covenant relationships that you have. He wants you to question the validity of covenant. But covenant is an attitude of the heart. It's more than just some legal binding contract that can be broken with an attorney, with a lawsuit. A covenant should be forever. And our actions should speak loudly when it comes to our covenant relationships. When God makes a covenant, it remains. God made a covenant with Abraham that he would be the father of many nations. And we call Abraham the father of our faith. And the covenant was that Abraham would have a son. Well, when Abraham and Sarah were young, they couldn't have a child. They tried to work it out on their own. They tried to work it out in the flesh. But that didn't work because that was not God's promised child. So when, Aaron, when Abraham was 100 and Sarah was 90, she got pregnant. Can you imagine that? That's a nightmare. That's not an imagination. It was a promise. God made a promise and he kept his promise. He waited until absolutely everybody would look and say, wow, that had to be God. Abraham was 100, Sarah was 90, and the angel appeared and said, you're going to have a child. And the Bible says they laughed. You would laugh too. So they named their son Isaac, which means laughter. So every time they called his name, it was a reminder of God's promise. This is the first Sunday of 2021. When we stand up this next time and we start making declarations, I want you to step. I want you to step. I want you to make a conscious effort to, to do something different, to step in the covenant, to make a commitment in your mind. I'm leaving fear behind. I am stepping into commitment. I am stepping into covenant because we serve a covenant-keeping God. He is the greatest promise keeper there has ever been. People tend to break promises. They tend to break covenant. They tend to walk away as if it never was even made. But you know, every time you break a covenant, there's pain. It hurts. So we have to turn to the Word of God when it comes to our covenant relationships. While I'm thinking about it, before I read these scriptures, would you guys like to have this stuff like in writing? I know we're speeding through a lot. Next Sunday, we'll have the points, the scriptures, and the declarations we have made. Because it's hard to, to get all this on the fly. Ezekiel 37, I will make a covenant of peace with them. And it shall be an everlasting covenant with yes. them. I will establish them and multiply them. And I will set my sanctuary in their midst forever. My tabernacle shall be with them. Yes. Indeed, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The nations will know that I, the Lord, sanctify Israel when my sanctuary 
is in their midst forever. You understand you are spiritual Israel. Another lesson for another day. Malachi 3.10, the Lord all-powerful says, try this test. Bring one-tenth of your things to me. Put them in the treasury. Bring food to my house. Test me. If you do these things, I will surely bless you. Good things will come to you like rain falling from the sky that fell on the first day of January 2021. Did anybody catch it? It was raining in our area. You will have more than enough of everything. Psalm 105. He always stands by his covenant. The commitment he made to a thousand generations. Matthew 6, So above all, constantly chase after the realm of God's kingdom and the righteousness that proceeds from him. Then all of these less important things will be given to you abundantly. Get on your feet and say, break, chains, break. Break, chains, break. Yes. Heavenly Father, I come, I come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus. My words are faith containers that carry Every seeds seed. into the spirit realm, which will produce an abundant harvest in my life. My words either set me free or put me into bondage. I choose to be totally set free and to stay focused with belief and certainty that I can have the abundant blessings as stated in the Word of God. I announce that it is you who has blessed me. It is you that empowers me. You have given me a great work to accomplish. I war for the releasing of finances and all resources that belong to me. Everything prepared for me before the foundation of the world that pertains to my life comes to me now. I call in resources from the north, the south, the east, and the west. I decree and declare that every resource necessary for me to fulfill God's original plan and purpose comes to me without delay now. Jehovah Jireh, go before me and make the crooked places straight. Break in pieces the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. Grant unto me according to your riches and glory, your tender mercies and immeasurable favor, the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places. I come against the spirit of poverty. The Lord prepares, prospers, prospers the work of my hands. By him and through him, I accomplish great exploits. I shall not be denied. I am daily loaded with benefits. Wow. Wow. You should have received communion elements when you came in the room. If you did not, bridge builders, can you help me if people do not have it? If you haven't been served, just slip your hand up and a bridge builder will get to you quickly. We've been receiving communion now corporately together since March. What powerful moments. There are hands in the room that do not have communion elements. Please help me. Thank you. I see you moving. I'll give you a minute. Just keep your hand up until someone comes to you. We have asked boldly of God things today. Do you sense his anointing? It feels different when you stand and say a thing, doesn't it? It's not just us saying it over you. But when you would stand and you would open your mouth and speak a thing over your life, something happens in heaven and it manifests in the earth realm. Today, we're going to pray the prayer of Jabez over our lives. You'll find Jabez in the middle of a bunch of begats. Those books that you kind of slip over when you're trying to read your Bible for the whole year. You know, you know, carpet beget strings and strings beget, you know, it's like, why are all these important? But God just put a nugget in First Chronicles and he put a comma. Like a breath of fresh air. In First Chronicles chapter 4 it says, Jabez called on the God of Israel saying, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Wow. Oh, 
that you would bless me indeed. Oh, God, that you would bless me indeed. Oh, God, we ask for you to bless us indeed. And enlarge my territory. Enlarge my sphere of influence. Enlarge my anointing. Enlarge what you have given to me. That your hand would be with me. And that you would keep me from evil. So I won't cause pain in 2021. So God granted him what he requested. Yes. With the bread. The Bible instructs us to do this in remembrance of what he has done for us. It is his body, his blood, and our covenant. So, Father, we now take the bread and this cup. And as Jabez prayed, we pray, bless us indeed.